Hello and welcome to the betting picks video for the NFL Sunday Slate Week 17. I'm your host Matthew Mata for Lamps.com. Joined here by Jason Gilbo and Jacob Wayne. We got the Cleveland Browns taking on the Washington Commanders in Washington. It's currently, I am getting no over under. Let me refresh DraftKings, and now it's at 40 and a half. We have a two and a half point spread. I'm going to have to delete all the bets we've made up until this point. But uh, the Browns, their season's basically over. The Commanders, you know, that loss a couple weeks ago to the Giants was a huge hindrance to their playoff hopes. Kind of a weird game. And uh, Jacob, when it comes to weird games, I feel like you always got some way to spin it. So I'll throw this over to you. Um, Yeah, I mean, we've seen this movie before. Carson Wentz coming into a must-win game to take his team into the postseason. Um, and what happened last year, he absolutely crapped the bed uh, against the Jaguars. And that was a pathetic, pathetic Jaguars team that did not want to win that game, and he just could not deliver. Um, now he's going against a Browns defense that very quietly ranks third in EPA defensively over the past month. And we talked a lot about their early season struggles, how they started the year really slow, their coverage was really lacking. They made a ton of adjustments halfway through the year, and they turned into a really solid defense. And... You know, you're going to have a banged-up offensive line for Washington going up against Miles Garrett and a secondary that's really turned a corner in recent weeks. And, you know, you have a, a wide range of outcomes from Carson Wentz. We've seen it throughout his entire career. There's some plays where he looks fantastic. There's some plays where he looks like the worst quarterback in the league. And, you know, those same plays happen in the same game. And I'm fully expecting that to be the case here. I think he'll have touchdowns. And I think he'll have turnovers. But I think the Browns are very much alive in this game. Um... I think they're going to be able to establish the run, even though the Commanders have been very good against the run this season. I think this is you know, pro probably the best rushing offense they faced this year, so I still think they'll be able to run the ball. And then I think Deshaun Watson has enough success to keep this game close. So my, my favorite way to play this game is going to be the Browns as a teaser. Uh, you can get them up through eight, uh, up to eight and a half. Anything, if it closes around minus one and a half, anything above seven is fine value on, on that teaser. You want to get seven and a half or better. Um, I paired them with the Panthers, who I talked about already. I think they can win that game. I think the Browns can win this game outright. I think there's a very real possibility that Carson Wentz comes out here and does what we've seen him do, which is, you know, not play well in the most important games of the season. And if you're in Washington, I think you'd rather have Taylor Heineke out there, but it's a different conversation. Yeah, it is a different conversation, and it's a conversation I think Ron Rivera's going to have to answer after this game when they lose. Uh, Jason... How are you feeling about it? You have experience with Carson Wentz. I do. It's not good. Yeah, bet against Carson Wentz. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm on the Browns here. Like this is a spot. I just love the Browns right out of the bat, the gate. Like it's just, it's a Carson Wentz spot. Like where this offense really would thrive with an accurate passer, and just because they have Dotson and Curtis Samuel and Logan Thomas and all these guys, where it's like they could just they are the ones who can make plays in space, but like they just don't have a quarterback who can get get that ball and really exploit that. So. Really tough to, to kind of rely on that. I th I think the way the rushing attack is, they still want to be super run heavy. Like we, we continue to see it, but it's just not an efficient look. Um, you know, and and two going up against a couple of poor run defenses like the Giants, they just they just weren't able to really move the ball. And I think that's going to continue into this week. Like I said, you add the the Wentz factor into it. I still also feel like the NFL does not want to see the Commanders in the playoffs. Um, so I think you can kind of factor that in a little bit, but. Yeah, the Browns have been playing better defense, and um, this is a commander's defense, as, as like I said, we talked about the run defense, but quietly giving up more than I would like, I guess, over the last few weeks. I know they put kind of the cap on McCaffrey, but Barkley had the, you know, was able to kind of pop off in the second matchup. Um, we saw Tyler Algier have a couple of great runs as well, the kind of negative game strip got away from the Falcons there. I think they actually could have continued to run the ball well on them. And now we're going in with a really good offensive line, and obviously Nick Chubb. So um, I, I think the Browns can control this game. I think they make enough defensive stops um, to kind of put that through. And, and, you know, I know we don't talk about him a ton here. We want to talk about him a ton. But Watson, over his last, you know, four quarters, six quarters, has started to kind of, I feel like, develop a list a little bit more rhythm with this group. And this is also quietly a really, really good um, passing attack. I like Donovan Peoples-Jones. I'm pretty high on him. Amari Cooper, I think, has been really solid this year. And David Njoku's healthy. Um, you know, throughout last week, just horrendous weather. But Njoku at full health, I think, can really exploit this Washington defense who struggles against tight ends. 
Yeah, I mean, I just want to sit here and ask what Taylor Heineke did wrong. Did he play well against the 49ers? No. But you're going against, and I don't know if we're all in agreement here, but I consider the 49ers far and away the best defense right now in the NFL. I don't think it's remotely close. When you look at the talent, the play calling, and their ability to cause havoc, like, I, I, I don't understand how you look at Taylor Heineke in that game, again, he did not play well, but he did have two or three good drives. I think two or three good drives is better than most quarterbacks can do against the 49ers right now. Um, so I feel like Washington's throwing away the season, what have you, but uh, I, I'm with you guys. I'm not willing to bet the Browns at two and a half. I would need over three, so I'll, I'll take it up plus three or plus three and a half, or like Jacob said, add it to a teaser, which again, I think we're going to create a ten-legged freaking teaser at the end of this video because there's so many games set up that way, but... I, I don't know. Like, I just don't get the decision, and I think you're going to be gifted value here on the Browns because of that decision. Yeah, I um, I think what I'm going to do now is because I had this teaser locked in already. I hadn't played a new money line, but the fact that you guys agree with both sides, I'm going to put a half unit on the Panthers' money line and a half unit on the Browns' money line and then play that teaser for a full unit and hope that we get some some upsets on Sunday. And a tenth of a unit on them parlayed together. Obviously, Jacob, got a round <laughs> robin. Oh, money line underdog parlay, yeah. All right, so, I mean, player props, Jason, I think you hit the nail on the head. I'm not going to say his name, but he's been playing okay. And uh, Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones have been... Well, I mean, I am shocked how well Amari Cooper played yesterday, or, uh, last week in that weather. He had, I felt like he's been playing well this season, not great. Last week, he played great. Um... So I think both of them are fine options against a pretty bad secondary. Like you mentioned, I think you also look at Njoku, where Washington concretely is just bad against tight ends. Um, and I think Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, they're going to struggle a little bit against a, a tougher defensive line. So, I don't know. I, I think those are two good places, depending on where the line's come in at. You probably get some value on Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones' receiving yards. And Njoku's. I, I actually just think the sports books in general are going to underrate the passing offense of the Browns in this game. Maybe you look at Watson's passing over, actually. So, anything else? Uh, cream hot anytime touchdown. Well, you, know, you know it's a good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cream. Oh yeah, let me see where that's at. It's only two ninety. I thought I could finally buy back. That's, in. That is not a real play. It's just a joke with Matt. I was just going to say, you know, it's you know it's a good play when Matt's recommending uh, Deshaun Watson props. Yeah, I, I'm going to go pray and take a shower yeah. after this. The integrity of Matt takes a hit, but the props don't. So, yeah. <laughs> Dimitri Felton, plus 2,200. That's your uh, touchdown to put one fiftieth of a unit on. If you liked this video, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. Thank you for watching. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more great NFL content like this. We also got college football bowl content and NBA content. More of that coming soon in January. Again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one very soon.